All right, today let's do an ugly integral. So here it is. So there's our ugly integral that we're gonna to try to evaluate here. I'm noticing I've got these ugly radicals and I've got a cosine which is giving me an idea. Don't forget what they want is a final number. So this is a definite integral and I'm gonna evaluate it from the lower limit of integration zero up to the upper limit of integration pi over two. As we do our work, we will not forget to write dx. You gotta write that in there, you can lose value. This question comes from an old IB exam, higher level IB, paper one, no calculator. And the intention would be to have this wrapped up within seven or eight minutes. No calculator, let's give it a shot. Okay, so the idea that I have here is, I'm gonna try to use something that has a cosine in it that allows me to generate a square root. And if you know your trig identities, these are always available on most tests. I know that there's a double angle identity for cosine. And the one I'm thinking about here is two cosine squared x minus one. Now why is that useful? Well take a look, if I was to bring the minus one over to this side, I'm gonna at least come close to a one plus a cosine, even though it's a double angle, but I might be able to do something for that too. And this square root allows me to generate, sorry, this square allows me to generate the square root. So watch, if I was to move the one over, then I'm gonna end up getting, well, I'm gonna get one plus cosine two x equals two cosine squared x. Now what's the, what's the deal there? Well, if I was to square root this side, I'm gonna get cos x equals this, I'm gonna be able to get a square root on the left-hand side, which is really what I'd like. So if I square root both sides, just like that, well, notice this is gonna give me root two cosine x, so the square root of cos squared is cos. I'm only gonna get the positive case, do you see? Because from zero to pi over two, cosine is always positive. So I'm only gonna get the positive case here. And I'll write that here in black. So the square root of one plus double cos. And this looks pretty good, other than the fact that I've got a double angle. But so long as the integrity between this, this side and that side are, are managed, it's okay. So if it's double here, this is half of that. So I could write this as x and this as half. So therefore, I could say the square root of one plus cosine single is equal to root two cosine half x. Do you see? And this is kind of nice because now up here I could do a substitution. Instead of integrating that, I could take the integral of that, which is much easier to do. Okay, well that only deals with this, but what about that one? Well, there's three double cos identities. The other one that I'm gonna use is, so cos double, is equal to, in this case, one minus two sine squared x. So I'm gonna use that one too because there's a minus in it. And the minus allows me to create the minus here. So if I was to isolate this, if I move this over to that side and this over to this side, that's gonna give me sine, well, two sine squared x is equal to one minus double cos. Now it's starting to form to look like that, do you see? The only problem is I've got the double, but I can deal with that. Now I wanna get the square root, so I'm gonna square root both sides. Square root, square root, and I'm only gonna get the positive case, case because this is gonna to reduce to sine x, and sine x is always positive between zero and pi over two. So this gives me root two sine x is equal to just the positive case, the square root, of one minus double cos. All right, well now look, again, what I'd like this is to be exactly like that. I'd like to take it to a single. So all I have to do is divide both of these by two, keep the integrity. So this allows me to then recognize that this, the square root of one minus cos single angle is equal to root two sine of half angle. So I'm gonna use this and this 
as a substitution for those two ugly radicals. So let's put those into this and see where we can go from there. Okay, so what we found was that the square root of one plus cos x can be substituted for root two cos half x. And the same for this one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite the original, the original integral as the limits don't change, so from zero to pi over two. Um, and I'm gonna get, now notice both of them have a root two in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a root two out front because it's a common factor. And I'm gonna write that as cosine half angle plus sine half angle. Don't forget your dx. So as you're writing your answer, you gotta keep that there. Now I'm gonna go directly to integration. So I'm gonna say equals root two, and then I'm gonna drop the integral symbol for a regular set of brackets. The integral of cosine or the antiderivative is sine. So the sine of one half x divided by one half, which is the same as multiplying by two. Same as here, the antiderivative of sine is gonna be negative cosine at one half x. Okay, so we leave that, divided by a half, which is the same as multiplying by two. And then I'm gonna close that up, and I'm gonna evaluate that between zero and pi over two. Notice there's a two common to both, so what I is pull the two out. So that's gonna give me two square root two, and then I'm just, le just left with the sine minus the cos. So sine one half x, minus cosine one half x, again between zero and pi over two. And then it's a matter of just doing some arithmetic. I'm gonna take the pi over two and plug it into x, and then subtract the substitution of zero in. So let's take it to the other side. So that's gonna be equivalent to two root two in big brackets, well, pi over two placed here is gonna become pi over four. Half of pi over two is pi over four. So that's gonna become sine pi over four minus, well, that's gonna also be cosine pi over four minus, I'm just gonna carry it down here, put the zero into both, that's gonna be minus sine of zero minus the cosine of zero, close the big bracket. So I'm just evaluating the integral. And the final answer, well that's gonna be what? Sine of pi over four is root two over two. Cosine of pi over four is root two over two. So that just becomes zero. The sine of zero is zero, and the cosine of zero is one. So that's a minus minus one. So two root two times one is just two root two. So the final answer, ladies and gentlemen, folks, is two root two. Okay, so there's an example of taking an ugly integration problem and doing a bit of substitution so that you can use some easier integral formulas. Anyway, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you want down in the comment section for future videos. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you right back here in the next video.